Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. So I'll give you a hint as to what we're going to talk about. We're going to be talking about the do's and the don'ts about coffee on the keto diet. Coffee, okay? A little hot. So where are all my coffee drinkers out there? I hope that you will give the video a thumbs up right now so I can identify you. Am I the only one? So thumbs up for all my keto coffee drinkers. And as I've told you guys many, many times in the past, during my own weight loss journey, losing 140 pounds, I learned a lot on the way. It wasn't like I figured this all out in one second, okay? And that's okay if you're trying to figure this stuff out too as you go and make mistakes. It's okay. And that's why I want to share with you a lot of the do's and don'ts, especially about coffee, because I want you to start off the keto diet every morning on the right foot, like start off right. You don't want to feel like you're confused when you're just opening your eyes. So these are going to be the tricks that I share with you today. Um, as I lost 140 pounds, I learned more and more. I came up with all sorts of do's and don'ts about coffee and the keto diet in general and specifically, and I just want to share them all with you because I used to love, love, love my coffee with lots of cream and sugar. Anyone else? <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you also like your coffee kind of sweet and creamy, um, because that's okay. The truth is we just have to learn to modify it, right, with the keto diet. You can still lose weight. You can still be on that ketogenic diet. You can still get into ketosis and all the fancy words. Um, you just have to learn to modify some of the tips and tricks as you enjoy your coffee, among other things. It's not that hard, right? We just have to share our little secrets with one another. We can't just hold it all in. So be sure that you're contributing today during the comments and sharing your questions, sharing what you've learned and products that you've come up with. That way we can all learn and steal from each other. So one of the things I like to do is show a lot of show and tell. Show a lot of show and tell. And I have at least probably 50 things over here. I know. Somebody is going to count, right? I hope you will. <laughs> and put it in the comments. Um, but I have lots of fun examples of positive and negative and things that I learned along the way. I think the number one uh, do that I have for everybody is do continue, do continue, blah, 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 do continue to drink your coffee the way you like it. You're all, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? Do contribute, do, blah, 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 do enjoy your coffee the same way you used to, but just learn to tweak it and do it in a healthier, lower carb way. Okay, did you laugh at me? Okay, I, I get so excited, I stumble a little bit. But seriously, you don't wanna to try to change everything at, at once. I think that that's where people go wrong. You know, they're used to having their coffee a certain way, and then they try to do it upside down overnight, and then disaster happens. You don't wanna mess with mama's coffee, especially when you're grumpy and tired, right? So don't try to change everything at once, and do try to make tweaks to adjust things the way you're kind of used to. So again, as I'm pulling out products and you're thinking about stuff, I hope that you'll share what products and suggestions are working for you. Because in the comments, you guys know that's how I pick out my prizes at random. Will it be you? So the more you uh, contribute, the more you talk in the comments, the more likely you are to potentially win something. I know, right? And I'll share with you what the prize is in just a minute. So as I'm getting some things out here, is this kind of inspiring you? Um, I do think, like I said, you should have coffee the way you like it, but modify it in a sugar-free, keto-friendly way. One of the products that I really like to use and I enjoyed tremendously during my journey of losing weight was these sugar-free syrups. Now, do you like these? And tell me which brand you like. I pulled out a couple here, but if you have a brand and a flavor you prefer, tell people in the comments. I think my most favoritist, is that a word? My most favoritist of all, as you can see, because it's empty, almost, is the Torani Sugar-Free Vanilla. I just feel like it's so versatile. So I tend to use this one the most. I put it in my coffee. You can also mix it with cream cheese for fun. You can even add it to your Diet Coke. Totally random fact. Um, but I use it quite often. And Torani has a wonderful gift pack, which I love at the holidays to get for myself, from myself to myself. And it's like all these cool holiday flavors, like in sugar-free English toffee, um, eggnog, gingerbread, chocolate, eh, 
But there's a bunch of them, and they're just fun to try. I mean, it's not like they're life-changing or anything, but they're kind of cool, right? It just kind of gets, gets you feeling like you're not missing out, like you're still kind of fancy having your fancy pants coffee. Um, where do you guys buy these? I'd like to know. Share in the comments. I personally shop at TJ Maxx or Ross or Big Lots, those kinds of discount stores. I mean, if I'm desperate, I'll go online and pay full price. But I think you can buy them for a really good discount, at least here in the States, at some of these discount grocery stores. So give those a try first. Maybe four bucks is about the most I've ever paid at a discount store. This one is hazelnut. It's pretty tasty. And this one here is ooh, French vanilla. You can't go wrong with that. That's one of my favorites. So again, please share in the comments if you have tried a product or a brand, or if you tried one and you're all like me with the chocolate. I hate that one. It's just terrible. I wanted to throw it away. It was like, Ugh. <laughs> so share which ones you don't like too. Um, but so often I think on the keto diet, people get these notions in their brain like, oh, I have to do things, you know, a certain way because, you know, I'm new at this and I read about it and some blog told me I had to. And this especially happens with products like MCT oil. They're like, oh, that's keto. I have to do that because that's keto. And then meanwhile, they put a bunch in their coffee. And then guess what happens? Anyone? <laughs> what happens when you put a bunch of this MCT oil in your coffee? Medium chain triglyceride oil. It causes some severely explosive diarrhea. It is a real frightening experience. So if you are going to venture down the path of trying to be perfect and trying to do things all perfectly with keto, um, and you do want to try MCT oil, just be ready for it, okay? And use a small bit and go slowly. Um, I, you don't have to. I don't use it. I bought one just so I could do show and tell, but I'm like, eh. I think it tastes really greasy, and it makes me feel like I'm wearing lip gloss all day. I'm all... <laughs> okay, that had to make you laugh, right? But seriously, you don't have to do anything just because someone tells you, oh, it's bulletproof. You have to do it because it's bulletproof. Like, who cares? Just do coffee the way you like, and then branch out and, you know, we'll start cutting the carbs with some of these suggestions here. Um, there are a lot of different creamer options. Any creamer people out there? Make sure you do a thumbs up. If you're a creamer person and trying to win a prize, type, type in the comments which creamer you really like. Um, I'd like to know. You know, you don't have to just use reaching. You don't have to just use uh, heavy whipping cream. I think that's like the gold standard of ketoness, which is a very official word. Um, you know, just because it's the least number of carbs and the maximum number of creaminess and, and highest in fat. But, you know, even though it has one gram per one tablespoon ser serving, it still packs a pretty heavy punch. And maybe you don't have it available. Maybe you run out. I don't know. I, I, it's okay. Maybe you're at work or you're at a social event and they only have half and half. Oh! <gasps> Oh, that's okay too. <laughs> I, in fact, use heavy, um, half, full fat, half and half for a really long time. Because during my journey, I remember thinking, like especially my mom told me growing up, that this was evil and wrong and I would die of high cholesterol. So for some reason, I had it in my head this was better. And then one day I'm all, it's kind of the same. You know, it's a little bit here and there in terms of carbs. This one's 40 uh, calories. This one's 50 calories. I'm going to have to put my glasses on to read the serving size. I bet some of you know, my experts. Uh, the half and half, you get two tablespoons for a serving. Uh, for the heavy uh, whipping cream, you get one tablespoon per serving. So it's basically kind of watered down. But you know, you're, you're fine. You're fine. No one's going to be like, ooh, she's better keto than that girl because she's having this and she's having that. There's no judgment, especially with dirty, lazy keto. That's why I get on camera and make a fool of myself on a regular basis because I really want to pay it forward and help people understand the truth about weight loss and especially about the keto diet because you don't have to do all this crap, right? I mean, come on, let's get real. Let's get real, people. Are you with me so far? You're tracking? Um, there's a whole bunch of creamer options I just want to bring to your attention in case you haven't thought of these before because, you know, some of these were new to me. I had to learn them along the way. Unsweetened almond milk is a real hit. It's easy to find. I buy it either at Walmart or at my local grocery store. It's only one gram of net carb per one cup. 
one cup serving, which is so much more than the previous products we just showed. So if you're a real heavy pourer, which is not a word, um, this might be a really good option. And it's inexpensive. There's not much else to it. I mean, I use it quite often for smoothies and random things. But if you're looking to get more like, let's say, protein in your diet, that's not going to be your best option. Um, probably more of a soy milk would be a better fit. Because the soy milk, at least you're getting like eight grams of protein per one cup serving, which is only two grams of net carbs per cup. So again, you get quite a bit, right? Now these are full, so I got to lift them kind of heavy. I stole them from my fridge downstairs. This one cracks me up. My husband bought it. It's called Not Milk. And I think he bought it just because of the name. But I was like, well, if it's not milk, then what is it? I have no idea, but I didn't really care because I looked at the side at the nutrition facts label and I'm like, hooey, it's only four grams of net carbs per serving, which is 80 calories per cup. But I was kind of interested because it's 2% reduced fat milk. And I'm like, huh. And then if you read further, it says plant-based milk alternative. Well, we have no idea what this really is. And it was on sale. So we're going to give it a try later. I'll let you know. There was quite a few things going on sale at the grocery store. We're always after a good bargain at my house. Here's another product. This is a Maple Hill Organic. Ooh, fancy. It's zero sugar advertised. Oh, and it's uh, no sugar, no preservatives, no sweeteners, reduced fat. It looks like it's some kind of regular milk, but it's sugar-free. Again, I'm like, well, what is it? No one really knows. It's got 80 calories. It is zero grams in net carbs. <gasps> Pretty good. And if you look at the ingredients, it just says organic, ultra filtered, reduced fat milk. And then a bunch of weird chemicals, which is funny, right? So who knows? What do you guys think? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments or if you have a different suggestion. I hope you will share. Now, when you go to the store and you're new at the keto diet, especially, or you're trying to make a little change, you start shopping in the creamery, the dairy section, and you start seeing products advertised like this. This one says keto creamer. Ooh, la, la. And you're like, oh, well, it says keto. I better have it because it says keto. No, 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 no. This is a, you know, we're talking about the do's and the don'ts of coffee on the keto diet. Here's a big old don't. If it says keto on it, put it back. Now, I'm sorry if that offends this cute company with the cow, but Honestly, you don't need it. It's usually marketing. It may not even meet your needs. This one happens to. It's got five calories, zero grams of net carbs, whatever. It sounds pretty classy for a tablespoon serving, but I haven't tasted it. I don't know. It's not necessary, though. I want to share with you how saving some money and just buying regular old, you know, cream can do the same thing. So you don't have to, like, panic. Um, I think that in the beginning, especially, you feel like, oh, I got to do everything perfectly. I got to do everything perfectly. And then you're out shopping and then you worry. Like, I know I personally got a little bit addicted. I'm just going to be completely transparent. This is a don't. <laughs> I got a little bit addicted to all these flavored coffee creamers. Is anyone else kind of like that? Now, this is the full sugar variety, but I want to point this out because the sugar-free and the sugar version of these coffee flavored creamers, they are a little bit Sneaky to tell apart, wouldn't you agree? I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'm always like with my glasses, like, what is this stuff? And I'm at the grocery store and I don't really see the little stripe. And for some reason, I miss the thing and I think it's the right thing and then it's not. And the next thing you know, I'm drinking this stupid coffee creamer and I'm so mad because I just poured a bunch of carbs in my coffee. So if that's happened to you, let me know. That's a don't. Don't try to be perfect. Don't try to think you have to buy all these products. They are fun, and they do come in amazing flavors. Um, but just be careful you're buying the right thing because they can be a little bit sneaky, right? You agree? <laughs> are you having fun with this topic? Anyone? <laughs> I am. I get really excited about my food and my drinks, and I want to help you make good choices here. So let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this so I know which you know things to choose going forward. This was something a reader turned me on to. They're called Nut Pods. I did not even know these existed. And so I went searching for these at the store. This is a French vanilla. They come in different flavors. It's called Nut Pod because it says almond and coconut creamer. So I'm going to guess this is made with uh, 
like a uh, nut milk. That would make sense, right? And it's very low in everything, which is fabulous. It's 10 grams. I'm sorry, not 10, 10 calories. Not that I'm counting calories, but I am taking a look for those people. Um, zero grams of carbohydrate, zero grams of net carb, no fiber, uh, 10 calories per serving. You get a tablespoon. And I heard it's pretty tasty. So what are the other benefits of this? If you've tried it and liked it, share with the group, please. Don't be shy. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the don'ts, don't forget to measure it, right? Okay, who out there is measuring their coffee creamer? Anyone? Is anyone forgetting? This is a big do and don't of coffee on the keto diet. You know, we talked about the teaspoon versus the tablespoon. I mean, that's a big difference. And hello, who puts this amount in their coffee? No one. <laughs> no one. We all go like this. We're like, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then the next thing you know, we have like 10 of these in our coffee, especially if you are at a, um, you know, coffee house. Right. If you're ordering your coffee, they're not putting this tiny bit. They put a ton in because they want your dang drink to taste good. And then you're all, "Ooh, I love this. I'm going to come back here. Right. They intentionally do that. So think about that. You don't have to do all these things, but keep in mind some of the do's and don'ts as we're moving forward. Okay. Um, there are so many benefits, you guys, of the creamers, the variety of choices, but you do have to be careful. Here's a big old don't. Don't forget to read the label. Hello. This one here looks innocent. Kind of looks like a half and half or those creamers you might find, you know, in a hotel room. But when you start looking a little closer, you know how these work. They're like those little peel back jobbies. Let's take a look at one. See how cute they are? Looking all innocent and small. You're all, oh yeah, that's no big deal. I can handle that. But then you start reading the label and you're like, what? Oh my gosh, it's full of sugar. Hello, three grams of sugar per creamer thing. Three. Now, I would not be spending three of my carbs on this, would you? I mean, come on. This is not that tasty. I could straight up come up with a zero carb version. So as a don't on the keto diet and coffee, don't forget to read the labels. And don't assume that just because something is coffee, that it's somehow, you know, sugar-free, carb-free. I think there's a myth out there like coffee, you know, it's like water, it's probably nothing. And then people just make assumptions. I have made a lot of mistakes in this area, and this was one of them. My husband brought these home from the store, and I'm like, ooh, that's tasty. And I started drinking them. <gasps> they have 15 grams of carbs per yada yada. That is so much, you guys. I wanted to seriously cry. That's like a whole day's worth on this stupid sprinkler thingy do that you put on the vanilla creamer. So read the labels, don't make any assumptions, and try out some of the fun products I'm recommending. Is anyone doing uh, protein drinks in their... Oh, that's a secret. Is anyone doing protein drinks as a creamer in their coffee? Anyone? And I'm curious, do you have a brand or a flavor that you prefer one or the other? Anyone? Tell me in the comments. I'm going to pick a winner for a prize. So here's an example, Premier Protein. These are available at Costco and at regular grocery stores, but they come in chocolate, strawberry. That would not be good for coffee. Uh, caramel, right? Vanilla, chocolate, I said. Any other flavors? Let me know. Um, and these are fun because you don't have to pour the whole thing in, right? Like even though they're super low in carb, they are two grams of net carb for the whole container. You're not putting the whole container in your cup of coffee, right? You're just putting a little poot. So in that case, you're getting a little protein, a little tastiness. And a lot of people really stand by these. Another brand I've just gotten turned on to is the Fair Life. This is another protein drink that you can pour into your coffee. And it's like a creamer effect, right? So tell me if you've tried any of these and what your thoughts are. And what else? When I'm super desperate and I haven't been to the grocery store, I always rely on my emergency situation. <laughs> this is it right here. This is my do. Do keep an emergency backup on hand because you don't always have, you know, fancy pants stuff like this. You might run out. Plus this can last for like 800 years. So you're always prepared. Um, I use this in smoothies, uh, coffees, especially like fancy coffee drinks, you know, like the ones, um, uh, I'll show you a picture. You know, like if you're making a recipe from one of the Dirty Lazy Keto cookbooks, 
Um, I use them a lot because the coffee drinks can be quite fancy when you add this kind of a high level fat um, coconut milk. And this is really high in fat, it's premium. So you're not looking at like that watered down stuff. These, you know, we're not talking about the, the not milks or the dairy alternative milks. We're talking instead about the canned stuff. It's much thicker. So much different between the two, okay? And the way you can look for this at the, I buy these at the dollar store. It's premium and it has like a certain percentage to it. This one's from Thailand. I think it's like 12 to 14% milk fat. For some reason, it's not on here. Um, it's zero grams per one third cup serving. And it tastes so good. Whew, you would just dive to have that in your coffee. It's so tasty. And it's a great backup plan. So do have a backup plan. Don't think you have what it takes at all times because you gotta be ready. You don't want that to be ex your excuse, right? Um, you know, we were talking earlier about um, MCT oil and I have to mention you know, some people think, oh, I got to put these um, ketones in my coffee or amino acids, you know, all these weird products. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you want to, you can. I'm not going to stop you, but I think they're completely unnecessary. I believe normal food is all you need with Dirty Lazy Keto. Real food, nothing fancy, no specialty items, none of these like, oh, I got to get my hair and nails fixed up by taking collagen. I don't think so. That's just my opinion. Now, if you've experienced otherwise, that's okay too. Um, I just don't really see the difference, even though some people talk about it. That's your deal, and I support you in your journey. Um, another don't, this goes along me, Stephanie, messing up earlier. You know, I did not just lose the 140 pounds and go, oh, I did it so perfectly. No, I didn't. Made lots of mistakes along the way. One of my uh, things that I just did recently is we go on vacation, and my husband will buy, like, cutesy little drinks and He'll get so mad I said cutesy. But we'll fill up a cooler, you know, we'll go on the car trip and go to a weekend somewhere at the beach. And I'll start pulling out dr random drinks that were chilled in our cooler. And the other day I pulled one of these out and I'm like, oh, it's coffee. Nitro. I'm tired. Sounds good. You know, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it looks like coffee. It smells like coffee. It's dark. So I just assumed, never assume, Stephanie. I just assumed, oh yeah, these kinds of things, these cold brews, these little cans of funness. I just assumed they'd be like, just fine. No, <laughs> no, don't make those assumptions, okay? When it comes to coffee and the keto diet, you don't want to assume. It's always better to just do a little homework and, you know, read the labels and, and stop and find your glasses, like me. <laughs> now, I promised you I would tell you about a prize. So for all the people that are contributing in the comments, I'm going to pick somebody at random, at random, to get a free copy of the Fast Food Guide. And this is a free book, actually, if you're a Kindle Unlimited member on Amazon, you can download the ebook version. But if you'd like a copy of the paperback, I will choose somebody at random in the comments. And the reason why I, I'm recommending this today is there's a huge section on <gasps> coffee. You guessed it. And it includes um, lots of different recommendations for what you can order at different coffee houses like McCafe at McDonald's, Dunkin', Starbucks. And then you can apply that same knowledge to other local coffee houses that might be in your community. You don't have to go to those places. A lot of people read this and they go, oh, you know, this really helped me learn when I go to, you know, blah, 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 a different local coffee, hop, coffee shop or a fast food in my community, then I feel like I'm more prepared to know what to order. And that's the whole point. Everything in this book is 10 grams or less net carbs per serving, and it's all recommendations of what my husband and I think would be a good fit when you're on the keto diet. So I hope that helps you. Um, I know, right? It's fun. So let's see here. If counting net carbs, and I keep talking about grams and net carbs this, and grams that, if that's stressing you out, I want to reassure you that I have a video I'll link up next, um, just specifically talking about net carbs. It's a the thumbnail says lazy keto, and it's all about the benefits of tracking. So you can stay tuned afterwards for that link. Um, but you know what? We make mistakes. I'm not the only one, am I? I mean, I know when this was in my cabinet in my early days of losing weight on the keto diet, I remember seeing agave and I was like, yeah, that's good. That sounds really healthy. It's like a plant. And I remember adding this to my coffee. That is such a bad idea. This is just sugar. 
right? We got to do a little research, don't we? Um, yes, you can have deliciousness. Let's not get wrong. You can have fun things, right? Like real whipped topping. You don't have to buy the sugar-free stuff. It's all very low in carb. It's one gram of net carb per two tablespoon serving, which is a squirt in your mouth. <laughs> I can't do it. I'll laugh too much and then it'll go all over the place. But you know what I'm saying. You can still have like fun coffee house drinks. You can still, you know, these are dues. Try these at home. Use all these fun uh, flavors and ingredients that you see like at Starbucks or at different you know, locations and try to whip them up on your own and put a little whipped cream on top so that you feel like you're living on the edge. You want to live on the edge and be happy. Um, it's not just flavors that I like to mess around with. You know, I talked about, you know, potentially putting a little whipped cream or making iced coffee drinks, but you can also play around with these uh, flavors. Yeah. Like I put this over here, my little spinner rack. I just ordered this yesterday because I was craving, you know, sweets. And I thought, well, why don't I try some of these fun little guys? Like this is Friendly's Butter Crunch Coffee. I don't even care what it tastes like. I just like the name and the picture of the ice cream on the front. Seriously. And it just fools my mind. It makes me feel like I'm doing something, you know, risque. And this is okay on the keto diet. Enjoy some of these flavored coffees as long as they're the zero carb. You know, you want to check the box. And most coffees are. But this one's like a dolce de leche. Probably saying it wrong, but so tasty and fun, right? And if you're not into the artificial thing, I know this is dirty, lazy keto, but some people prefer, you know, doing things more naturally. That's okay, too. Um, you know, get out your cinnamon sticks and grate them. You can churn some butter. You can add that to your coffee. Some people do that. Um, you can sprinkle uh, cocoa powder <laughs> cocoa powder on top, especially with the whipped cream, or even some cinnamon. Um, but one of the don'ts that I want to warn you about is, and this happens to me too, especially with uh, the fancy drinks, you know, that we're talking about. When you're traveling or you're out and about at a cafe, let's say, and you're ordering one of these drinks, a lot of people, and I'm included, you start having these weird cravings like for a bagel, Right? Because in your previous life, like before Dirty Lazy Keto, maybe you used to order your coffee with, you got your coffee to go, and then you got your donut or your special treat. So be aware of those kind of urges. You know, don't go there if it's going to cause trouble for you. Maybe just make them at home for a while. I've got plenty of recipes to help you with that. Um, or, you know, you have to kind of take baby steps. It's okay to just avoid those places for a while until you get your footing. Do you agree? Um, I really do believe that every single sip, every bite counts. Okay, I'm not saying that Dirty Lazy Keto is some kind of free-for-all, um, but I'm just very careful. You know, I enjoy getting uh, products like with artificial flavoring and color. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I enjoy, you know, using co uh, cocoa powder or other natural type ingredients. I even like using some unnatural ingredients, even though this really does taste kind of terrible. <laughs> But with a uh, sugar-free, like, iced coffee, I'm willing to sacrifice maybe being so fabulous. Um, I'll use pure vanilla, and I'll also use stuff from the dollar store. But the point is, I'm trying to treat myself. I'm enjoying my coffee on the keto diet, using all these do do's and don'ts so I don't feel like I'm missing out and I can stay on track. So, you know, if you want something pumpkin spice, who says you have to, like, spend hours in the kitchen making things from scratch? You can find like a keto spice coffee and just kind of go from there. There's different ways to approach this. Um, you know, as a public service announcement, I want to remind everybody about drinking water because when you drink the coffee, you get a little bit dehydrated. And we all know ketosis is also dehydrating. Um, but aside from drinking the extra water when you're having coffee, there's nothing stopping you. You can still enjoy all this deliciousness. Okay, all of it, every single bit of it, every single bit. Well, maybe not this one, <laughs> but you can enjoy it so much fun on the keto diet, uh, especially with dirty, lazy keto. I feel like your options are much broader. You can still lose weight. You can enjoy that favorite cup of coffee. Just tweak it a little bit and use some lower carb, more keto friendly products, and you'll still be super successful with your weight loss. 
I think so. And I know that you do too, deep down. You just need that little reminder. And that's why I'm doing these videos to try to help you. Because um, I want to encourage you. I want to support you on your journey. I want to tell you that you could do this. I think Dirty Lazy Keto and the Keto Diet is doable for everyone, no matter what your age, no matter where you're starting out, no matter how much weight you have to lose. You know, it can be a little bit or a lot like me, and you're going to do just fine. It's going to work. Come on, if I can do it without any training, no medical professional, no assistance, you know, all by myself, then you can too. And you've got so many great resources at your disposal. Um, if you were curious about some of the numbers, I went really fast today. Um, but you can follow along in your Get Started Guide, your Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started Guide. On page 58 begins the chapter on coffee. So it includes so much of what we talked about already. That way you're not like, oh my God, I have to rewind it and write all that stuff down. It's already here for you. So you can do it, you guys. Let me give you a huge round of applause. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. You can do it. You can do it. Are you giving yourself a round of applause? Come on, in the comments, give it. Say yay. I can do it, I can do it, I can do it.